So in this video, we're going to talk about a crucial number for equity investors, the dividend yield. Now, a lot of investors underestimate the importance of dividend. They look at buying shares and they think, well, actually, the main reason I buy shares is for growth. In other words, they buy shares hoping that they will rocket in value, that will have maybe another dot-com boom, and having bought low, they'll be able to sell them all for much more money later on and bank a big capital gain. But the reality can be rather different. Actually, you should be looking at shares for income too. And there's a good reason for that. Uh, if you look at the performance of shares in the FTSE 100 over the last 10 years, those are the top blue chip companies in the UK, you find something rather interesting. First of all, on this side of the equation, not much growth. The FTSE 100 index has been static for the best part of 10 years. So anyone who bought shares 10 years ago will be quite disappointed. No big capital gain there. However, look at the income side of the equation and things improve. Quite a lot of FTSE 100 big blue chip UK companies in say the utilities sector pay generous dividends and that's where you get your return. So to ignore income and look purely at growth can be a mistake. Now when we talk about income from a company we're talking about dividends. In a moment we'll have a look at the calculation of a dividend yield. In other words, the return that an income investor expects from buying shares. But first off, what are these things, dividends? Well, number one, the directors of the company decide how much they'll pay. So every year they sit down and they look at their profits for the year and they make a decision. How much will we pay out as a dividend, as income, to our investors? And how much will we keep and try and use to grow the business? Secondly, they normally pay them in two chunks. So you hear interim dividends being declared and final dividends being declared. And the amount you get in total for one year is a combination of that halfway stage dividend and the final or four year dividend. So as an income investor buying shares, you want to be focusing on the total annual dividend offered by a company, but you want to see it as a return on your investment. So we're going to take a look at how we can equate the income being paid by a company with the price you're paying for the shares today as a return to an income investor. So let's take United Utilities, a well-known utility company. And the directors have confirmed that for the latest 12 month period, they'll be paying a dividend of 30p. Now clearly that's not the total dividend, that's the dividend per share. So if I own one share in United Utilities, I can expect 30p. If I own 10 shares, three pounds. Um, so what sort of a return is that as a shareholder? Well, what I need to do is ask myself a question. 30p is the return on what? Well, it's the return I get for paying today's share price. So as an income investor, I'd look to compare that to the current share price. And let's say that's around £5.80 or 580 pence. So 30p over 580p. And the yield suggests I'm looking at a percentage as the answer. So how do I make this into a percentage. The answer is I just multiply by 100% at the end. And if I crunch the numbers correctly earlier on, that gives a yield of around 5.1%. Okay, so if I pay £5.80 for United Utility shares, they pay me a dividend. This is the interim and final dividend combined of 30 pence on every share I own. As a percentage, that's a 5.1% return. Now what? What does that mean? What does that tell me? Is that good? Should I be jumping for joy or not? Well, key question, what else could I have done with my money? I chose, or I'm choosing, to 
put £5.80 into United Utilities, what else could I have done? Let's have a look. Okay, so I've made my decision. I'm looking at United Utilities. offering a 5.1% dividend yield. That's the annual expected percentage return for buying the shares today. So maybe what I do is I think, well, this is a utility company. So I wonder how that compares to the utility sector. That's a good starting point. Is United Utilities generous in the sector, stingy or about average? And maybe what I find out is that the utilities sector generally offers a dividend yield, that's on average, across all companies in it, of around 5%. So United Utility is pretty typical, really. So that's not telling me very much. It's telling me that it's a typical utility company. So maybe I'm thinking, I'll compare it to the FTSE 100. I'll look a bit wider. What would I get as a return on my investment in income terms for buying an average FTSE 100 company? And let's say the answer is around 3.2% about right for today. Now suddenly I'm getting a picture. The average company in the UK pays 3.2%, the average utility company pays 5 and United Utilities is the average utility company on that basis. So maybe this is quite generous. I'm thinking, well great, rather than buy an average FTSE 100 company with a 3.2% yield, yeah let's go hunting in the utility sector for something with a juicier yield. I might also step back and ask myself a different question. If I can get 5.1% from United Utilities, is that better or worse than I could get in the bank? Bank accounts are lower risk after all. Share cut shares they cause problems, so companies go bust. Um, so if my bank account offers more than 5.1%, maybe I'll take the bank account. Or what would the government give me for buying IOUs issued by the government called gilts? Because investing with the government is safer than buying shares in companies. So there are a number of things I can compare a dividend yield to to start to get a feel for, is it high enough? Uh, am I being offered a decent return? By itself, not a particularly useful number. Okay, before I jump in and buy United Utilities for an annual return of 5.1% on my money, I also need to consider some key risks. One of the things I need to ask myself before jumping in and buying a high yield company is why is its yield higher than the average? Now utility companies are in a good position to pay generous dividend yields. Um, essentially utility companies don't grow very quickly so shareholders expect a decent income return as compensation. After all they're regulated and in fairness there's a limit to how much water you can actually sell your customers. The other factor to bear in mind is that some companies pay much more generous yields. So I might be tempted to abandon United Utilities and look at HMP. Now there, I can get a yield of around 15%. Well, who'd go for a boring old utility company when you can get 15% from a company that distributes records, DVDs and CDs? Surely that's a no-brainer. Surely this is where my money needs to be. And some analysts would say, exactly right. Why would you turn down 15% a year? Well, there are several reasons you might. This is a company that's struggling. That yield calculation is based on taking the annual expected dividend over the share price. And right now the share price is low. It's dropped 35 to 40% this year alone. This is a company battling against online competitors and a couple of its core rivals have already gone out of business. So you have to ask yourself the question, what am I being offered? And why? Is this a bit of a bribe to get me into HMV? Now, this could be the bargain of the century. Maybe the yield reflects a very low share price and a bargain share. But always be aware that there may be a risk sitting behind this 15%. Good rule of thumb in financial markets, you don't get something for nothing. There are no free lunches. So, high yields for income investors, 
good news, but always ask yourself the question, why am I being offered it? And then ask a second question, which is if that number is based on a particular estimate of dividends, will the company deliver? What happens if the directors cut dividends? It's not unheard of. Think of BP recently, slashing dividends to conserve cash and also in fairness to keep the American regime happy in the wake of the deep water disaster. So there are risks. And if you're not prepared to take the risk, then maybe a high yield share isn't for you. Or maybe you need to look at an alternative, a company that is more cash flow stable, a little less risky, but still offers an above average dividend yield.